An autonomous spaceport drone ship, ASDS, is an ocean-going vessel derived from a deck barge, outfitted with station-keeping engines and large landing platform, and autonomously controlled when on station for a landing. Construction of such ships was commissioned by aerospace company SpaceX to allow recovery of launch vehicle first stages at sea for missions that do not carry enough fuel to return to the launch site after boosting spacecraft onto an orbital or interplanetary trajectory. At this point, SpaceX could claim to be both a rocket company and also a maritime shipping company. The company owns a fleet of drone ships to provide their rockets with a safe place to retrograde land in the ocean without having to splash down. In the past, they had additional ships for fairing catching. Dragon capsule recovery, and other support efforts. One of the most critical aspects of SpaceX's quest for reusability of its space hardware is the recovery of its boosters, and to achieve this, they decided to land its boosters on the sea. These are made to land on large drone ships to prevent from losing the boosters and to be easily transported back to land. After many successful landings, the large and dependable drone ships have become a vital link in SpaceX's dream to make space travel affordable. Recently, SpaceX added another drone ship to the pair it had in service already, and the company welcomed its newest drone landing ship with an announcement by Elon Musk on Twitter. Welcome to the SpaceX, a shortfall of gravitas. Stay tuned as we explore SpaceX's insane new drone ship. To the armchair engineer, landing a rocket in the sea is just plain suicide, as many things can go wrong. To start with, when floating on the sea, the drone ship or barge is small compared to the land available for the booster to land on. Compounding the problem is that the drone itself can be knocked around on sea more than 300 kilometers off the coast. Combining the size and the instability of the stone ship, the booster can miss the drone ship and crash into the sea, making it harder or even impossible to recover. SpaceX has three operational drone ships, which include Just Read the Instructions 2, JRTI, and a shortfall of Gravitas ASOG operating in the Atlantic for launches from Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And of course, I still love you, OCISLY, operating in the Pacific for supporting missions from Vandenberg Space Force Base. JRTI operated in the Pacific Ocean for Vandenberg Air Force Base launches from 2016 to 2019 before leaving the port of Los Angeles in August 2019. The ASDS is a key early operational component in the SpaceX objective to significantly lower the price of space launch services through full and rapid reusability, and was developed as part of the multi-year reusable rocket development program SpaceX undertook to engineer the technology. Any Falcon flights going to geostationary orbit or exceeding escape velocity require landing at sea, encompassing about half of SpaceX missions as of 2016. The drone fleet used by SpaceX to catch falling rockets now has a third autonomous ship, whimsically called a shortfall of gravitas. Founder Elon Musk unveiled the newest floating rocket landing pad on Twitter Friday, July 9th, along with a dramatic video from a flying drone circling the ship. Autonomous SpaceX drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas, Musk wrote succinctly in the post, the drone ship is fully automated with no tugboat required to take it out into the Atlantic Ocean near SpaceX's typical launch site at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, he added in another tweet. The new ship will be put in place in Florida to support Atlantic launches of Falcon Heavy and the flagship rocket of SpaceX, the Falcon 9, that regularly sends Starlink broadband satellites to orbit and NASA astronauts and cargo to the International Space Station among other customer requests. SpaceX's next expected launches are Starlink set sometime in July from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California and the CRS-23 ISS cargo mission from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on August 18th, according to Spaceflight Now's worldwide launch calendar, a shortfall of Gravitas, ASOG, will replace the role of the long-running Of Course I Still Love You drone ship, which has supported Atlantic launches since 2015. This month, it was switched to the Pacific Coast in a month-long journey beginning June 10th. SpaceX is ramping up launches of its Starlink satellites in California, requiring more drone ship support to catch the reusable stages of its rockets. Meanwhile, ASOG will work in the Atlantic alongside SpaceX's other drone ship. Just read the instructions, JRTI, which moved to Port Canaveral from the Port of Los Angeles in 2019. It appears the drone ships may work together to catch reusable side boosters from forthcoming launches, if a Twitter conversation in 2018 still holds water, so to speak. Back then, Musk said a third drone ship was under construction. Like the other two drone ships, ASOG is named in honor of work from the late science fiction author Lane M. Banks. The new ship's namesake is the fictional spaceship experiencing a significant gravitas shortfall, while the other two ships are also named for vessels mentioned in Banks' culture novels. The ship A Shortfall of Gravitas is named after is called Experiencing a Significant Gravitas Shortfall, and comes from the book Look of Windward, 
Of course, I Still Love You and Just Read the Instructions, on the other hand, come from a book called The Player of Games. The original Just Read the Instructions launched in 2014 and unfortunately only had two failed landing attempts before it was retired from service. Its successor, as well as Of Course I Still Love You, picked up the slack on the East Coast, Port Canaveral, and West Coast, Port of Long Beach, respectively. A shortfall of Gravitas will be joining Just Read the Instructions to support the company's operations on the East Coast. Originally announced in 2018, a shortfall of Gravitas was supposed to launch in the mid-2019. However, it was delayed a bit before finally being completed this month. It is actually an upgrade from its siblings in that it won't require a tug to reach the rocket's landing area. It will have a lot more to live up to, though, after some original hiccups due to technical difficulties. Both other drone ships have racked up impressive number of successful landings, with 39 successes and 6 failures for Of Course I Still Love You, and 17 successes and only one failure for the Just Read the Instructions 2. The last 14 attempts at remote landing on ASDS were successful, including 3 in June 2021. A shortfall of Gravitas has yet to build up such a track record, but the underlying engineering should be the same. ASOG's arrival has also come as SpaceX is ramping up work on its Starship prototype series that is meant to test out a spaceship that could one day be used as the backbone of Mars settlement scheme by the California company. SpaceX hopes to do an orbital test of Starship soon and is targeting July but is waiting on certification from the Federal Aviation Administration in a process that typically takes months at the least. Starship launches from nearby the village of Boca Chica, Texas. According to Elon Musk, its new floating platform for rocket landing stands out because it works autonomously, that is, without the need for a tugboat to transport it to the launch site. Finally, it is worth noting that SpaceX intends to accelerate the launches of its Starlink satellites, which will increasingly require support from drone ships such as the ASOG to capture reusable components from the company's rockets. The arrival of the new drone ship also comes as the aerospace company intensifies its work on the new prototype spacecraft. One is the Starship, a model of which SpaceX hopes to conduct an orbital test soon. Let's hope a shortfall of Gravitas will live up to its predecessor's successful records. Why sea landing for SpaceX? Many things have gone wrong as SpaceX tried to land a rocket on land, with several boosters crashing and bursting into flames. In addition to this, there are a lot of other reasons why SpaceX decided to land its boosters on the sea and fuel is one of them. Fuel is a critical component of any mission because the engineers have to balance carrying enough quantity of it and keeping the rocket as light as possible. As you can imagine, the Falcon 9 is heavy at more than half a million kilograms, which means fuel is premium. When launched to space and the booster returns, the speed needs to slow down from more than 8,000 kilometers per hour down to zero, and this is done by reigniting the engine, and it requires fuel. The fuel has to come from the leftover after boosting the upper stage and payload was blasted to low orbit. Then one would have more than enough fuel for landing. However, the mission was destined to go beyond Earth's orbit. One would need more fuel because you have to launch faster, and this will leave you with no fuel for the landing. This would be a big blue for SpaceX's dream of reusable boosters. Recall that the company wants to launch missions to Mars, which will require lots of fuel to attain the speed necessary for the launch, but not enough fuel for landing. However, with the aid of geography, we can see a way out of this problem. When SpaceX launches from Florida, a ticket headset over the Atlantic Ocean, therefore making the ticket land at sea and not having to return to the launch site will reduce the fuel required because the distance is shorter. This means that for more ambitious launches, it makes sense for SpaceX to land on the sea. What do you think about SpaceX achieving this key milestone? What do you think this means for future space launches? Let us know by leaving a comment in the comment section below.